TVI Corporation, designers, manufacturers, and integrators of rapidly deployable soft shelter systems for use in the public safety, hospital, hospitality, and military markets. This is the setup procedure for the three-line TVI decontamination system. Two men will position the shelter roughly in the area where you're going to be deploying the system. They are now unfurling uh, the ground cloth, keeping in mind that the red handles indicate hot entry, uh, black handles the closest to the camera indicate uh, clean and exit. They're spreading the ground cloth out now. They're now going to pull the curtain sets off the top of the shelter and set them aside. As they position the shelter in the center of the ground cloth, the fluorescent yellow markers on the bag indicate the ends of the shelter so that you can quickly make sure that the configuration of the shelter is proper on the ground cloth. Now they are grabbing the setup handles, which are the two red handles on the side of the shelter, and stepping backwards quickly and moving the shelter apart and stretching out the frame. Now they're going to move to the either end of the shelter and put the frame section in the middle over your head, over their heads. Now one individual will go to the center and the other individual will go to the side and the other individual then goes to the side as well and pulls the shelter up vertical on the sides. He'll be grabbing the red handle and pulling it in vertical, the walls vertical and then clipping in the uh, floor cloth. All right, this is the basin bag, the containment basin bag. You'll find the hand sprayers in there as well as the containment basin. He's now going to take the containment basin and take it to the interior portion of the shelter where the shower booms are, and they are going to stretch it out side to side. It'll articulate from wall to wall. You will put the diverter flaps that are on the side wall into the basin to collect all the water that hits the sidewalls and you're complete with the basin. We are now going to position the discharge pump that sits in the basin, the collection basin, and will discharge the wastewater to the exterior of the shelter. It consists of a eight foot three quarter inch discharge hose and a submersible um, electric pump. The discharge hose and the connections to the submersible pump go to the exterior of the shelter through the side snorkel. They are now moving the patient conveyor into place. They're going to remove it from the bag. They'll now position it inside the shelter by lifting both ends and getting it handled, lifting it over the basin and actually through the basin to the other side. Positioning the basin wall between the uh, articulating frame setup. They are now bringing in the patient conveyor board and it goes on top and allows you to carry the patients up and down the interior of the shelter for decon. The hand wands connect to the black uh, connectors in the ceiling and with a constant pressure uh, well, snap together and will lock in place. We'll now put in the isolation curtains that will isolate the two ambulatory lines from the non-ambulatory line that goes down the center of the shelter. These clip in with stainless steel clips to a pre-positioned drop uh, for the curtains to attach. This is our two by two or two line hospital system. We have the side cut away on this system so that you can quickly see into the shelter and see how the two individuals are setting it up and putting it in place. They're going to remove the ground cloth and place it where you want the shelter to be set up. Again, keeping in mind that the red handles go to the end where 
The contaminated individuals will be coming into the shelter. The black handles indicate the cool end of the shelter or where they will be exiting. Now that the ground cloth is set up, we are going to position the shelter again in the center of the ground cloth and be prepared to set it up. They're removing the bag and pulling the Velcro strips down. They're now looking to remove the compression strap, which we call the belly band. That allows you to compress the shelter more tightly when you're packing it up. The belly band is removed. They're going to go to either side. They're going to grab the top nodes on either side and pull the frame backwards slowly. Now, it's configured with the other side open. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the entire shelter so that you can see into it as we put it up. Now it's properly configured so that we can have the one side open so that you can see what's going on and they're going to go to both ends now and lift the shelter above their heads and allow the sides to come in vertical. And they will now position the frame so that you can clip the stainless steel loops to the floor cloth. And the loops are at the very inside node of the inside wall of the frame of the shelter. Now you have completed the basic setup of the, sh of the shelter, this two by two, two line shelter system. What will happen now is you will bring in the curtains, you will set in the basin and bring in the other equipment as needed for your particular requirements. This is TVI's patented pre-plumbed shower system that allows you to quickly erect the shelters without having to bring any additional equipment into the shelter to establish showers and water flow. One of the characteristics of this system is that we have created a rapid replacement nozzle so that in case you have dirt or any kind of silt that might plug or foul your spray nozzles, you can quickly remove it, clean it out, and replace it so that you do not have to stop operations. This is our squad decontamination shelter. You can see it's a two-man deploy unit. It sets up like the other systems that you saw earlier in the video and it's important to note that we use the best structural grade aircraft aluminum for our frames, stainless steel hardware, uh, UV stabilized fabrics that are fire retardant. They're going to take the shelter down now by pulling out on the red handles on both sides of the shelter and then collapsing the shelter to the center of the ground cloth, compressing it as tightly as they can and they're now going to put what we call the belly band around the frame to finally compress it into a tighter, tighter. configuration for bagging and storage. And roll the shelter off of the ground cloth so that you can now fold the ground cloth up and rebag the shelter. He's now positioning the water heater close enough to the shelter to attach the decontamination supply lines. He'll now attach the injected solution line to the top outlet on the heater. The bottom outlet is indicated by the sign on the side of the heater. Uh, it indicates that it's the rinse. You need to keep that in mind when you're configuring the shelter so that you're moving people into the shelter that are contaminated on the the solution injected side and out on the rinse side. He will now hook up the decon line hoses to the shower booms at the shelter perimeter. We're now bringing in an inch and a half water supply either off of a hydrant or from a pumper and making a connection on the input side or the inlet side of the uh, water heater. Now that you've made the connection for the supply, we'll come to the valves on the discharge side of the machine and close them. 
Next we were going to set the temperature control valve to full hot. Once flow is established you'll be able to determine what your water temperature is by watching the temperature gauge which is on the very top of the machine. You'll be able to determine the input pressure uh, from your supply whether it be hydrant or pumper by this gauge on the front of the machine which is directly above the mixing valve. This is the dosatron which is injects solutions into the wash side of the heating unit. It's preset at the factory for a half a percent solution, uh, mostly soaps or surfactants. This is the bottle that contains the surfactants. You remove the top, put the solution into the uh, into the containment bottle and it will automatically be siphoned through the dosatron when the machine is operational. Now that the valves are in a closed position, pressure, bring water to your system and pressure the system up and check your inlet pressure. Once you've established that you've got water pressure to the machine, open the top valve here on the uh, rinse side or wash side and allow the air to bleed off and uh, until, you make, until you get water flow. And then close the valve again. Once you've established water, water supply and you've closed the valves, take the ground fault interrupter provided uh, cord and establish electric power to the machine. Once you have electric power and you have water supply, put the on switch to the on position the machine will not fire though until you actually establish water flow. Once water flows, the machine will fire and start to heat the water. You want to then readjust your temperature toward the center of the range and start to monitor your, your temperature fall until it falls into the range that you desire for decontamination. Once the system fires, allow it to stabilize and you will have water or warm water within about 35-40 seconds. Now that the system is is operational, as long as you keep uh, the fuel full, the fuel can full, and uh, surfactant in the system and an ample water supply and an electric supply, the system will cycle on and off for the period of time that you're using uh, the water heater. To quickly remove the fuel can for refueling, you will remove the supply lines from the rapid disconnects and the can will then lift out. And we are now moving the heater into place, the hot air heater. Um, the expandable duct is being opened up. He's now connecting the duct to the sleeve on the heater, which is a simple compression fitting. And he will now connect the ductwork to the shelter through the snorkel on the exterior of the shelter. The side red locking devices are used only when you have, are expecting heavy weather or snow loading. It helps give you rigid sidewall uh, for heavier wind loading or snow loading. Uh, it is not necessary to connect the red locking straps for normal uh, deployments. This is the TVI anchor kit. This secures the shelter to the ground if you happen to be deploying on ground surfaces. You have a mallet, you have wind lines, and you have stakes, aluminum stakes. When you're anchoring on ground surfaces, you want to take the clip end of your wind line and attach it to the stainless steel loop on the shelter system itself. You will then have driv drive a stake into the ground, and you will loop the wind line over the stake and tighten the cinch strap in such a fashion as to secure the line to the shelter and tighten the shelter on both sides. On a hard surface, concrete, asphalt, or otherwise, you'll want to get some sandbags, something similar to this type of a bag or any kind of weight at all that you can then put on the frame itself to uh, create ballast. This is the repair kit for the shelter. It consists of some fabric for tears that you might that might happen to the system during normal operations. Um, you have the ground cloth repair fabric and you have the shelter repair fabric. Cement to attach the repair fabrics to the shelter 
Additional clips for the locking devices on the side of the frame. Wind line anchor bolt for when you stake the system down or when you're tying wind lines to the system. Individual nodes that connect the articulating frame together. And simple tools, box wrench, a ratchet with a 7 16 inch uh, box head and a, an Allen wrench to replace the, any damaged scissor sections you might have. We have sections of the frame, three different sizes that, are, that make up the various portions of the frame. We have the black offset frame sections, the white offset frame sections, and the purple offset frame sections. And these each correspond to the position on the shelter that these tubes need to be replaced in. We don't recommend you doing this, but in order to show you the weight to strength ratios and the ruggedness of our system, I'm going to point load it on the side wall with uh, roughly 210 pounds, which is twice the weight of this system when it's bagged. As you can see, it's a very, very strong structure. And as you also see that I have the uh, weather straps or the uh, snow load and heavy wind straps locked and I'm going to unlock it now just to show you that we still don't need to have those connected and I can, and it can still support my weight. We're very proud of the weight to strength ratio of our system and expect it to give you many many years of good service.